Hi everyone, Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in, we're going to relax and create together. I hope you're all doing well. Happy Saturday. Happy Easter weekend. Um, I was live earlier this afternoon. Give me a shout out in the comments if you were able to tune into Crafternoon today and saw the new fun fold. If you missed it, no worries. I'm going to show you a recap of the fold. So, uh, but tonight we're going to make a card together. Um, I got a fun fold card as a swap at On Stage Convention, and I was hoping that you would help me uh, recreate it um, with different products. So that is our game plan for tonight. I literally just got home um, <laughs> like eight minutes ago um, from, it's my husband's birthday today. So we were out for dinner. So between the sandwich between the two videos, um, and actually he's still there. I, I took the car home and he's gonna get a lift home. So um, how are you? I hope you're well. I uh, I didn't wanna miss this time together. So um, we get, we're having dinner again tomorrow. So we have lots of lots of opportunities. So you were at Crafty and Jennifer, did you get your car made? I hope you got your card made. Um, all right, we're gonna go ahead and just dive right in. I wanted to remind you all, so Crafter Noon and Project Sheets. Um, if you go to SueStampfield.com, you can subscribe to my free Project Sheet emails, which come out a couple times a month. And then um, the Crafter Noon, uh, my blog, which is where Crafter Noon is going to, um, there'll be a Crafter Noon blog post that shows photos of all of the alternate cards and the main card and then information about the tutorial. So my hope is to get that up by Monday. It's a little bit late this month because of all the travel I did earlier. So I apologize for that. Um, and shout out to my moderator who's hanging in the comments here on YouTube. Hey, Mary Nass. She is here to help us out tonight. We really appreciate everything that you do. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I left my husband. He's with a whole group of people and they're having a ball. One of his uh, uh, co-workers that he, they work together their very first job right out of college. Um, they're both pharmacists. And uh, she and he share the same birthday, the same birth year, the same everything. So we have for 37 years, we've been going out to dinner with them. Um, it is their 60th. So um, her uh son and daughter and their uh, partners met, uh, joined us tonight along with, and they had a surprise for her and brought some of her friends because they live in Arizona now. So anyway, long story short, they're having fun, they're fine, and um, I am here to craft with you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, find the right camera. Here we are, okay, awesome. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of our new fun fold for March. So every month I do a special class. Uh, if you place a $50 order the month before, you, so in February, if you place a $50 order with me online, you got a packet to make this card. And so this is the February fold. It is the double stack display card. Okay, stands for display. It's actually very easy to make, but it's kind of one of those wow cards and there's lots of possibilities. So we made this one together at, at today at three. And then I make a whole bunch of alternate cards um, using that same design. So we're gonna do a quick little run. Oh my goodness, what happened here? Hang on, a little, little issue. <laughs> And an envelope sticking to my card. That's not going to work. Um, so uh, we, I made a, a painted lavender version. I used the actual stamps. And then this gorgeous vellum is a hidden gem in the catalog. It's about to retire. So I'm telling everybody about it because it is so awesome. Um, it's patterned vellum. There's three different patterns and it's called... Um, vellum uh, basics actually. And so you get the polka dots and then on the inside here, I've got the other vellum, which is the leaves. I know it's hard to tell on the camera, but in person, it's just a very subtle pattern that you can see in the background and it really adds a lot of elegance to your card. So this was one of the alternates um, with also the perennial lavender paperback here, but use, mostly using the painted lavender. So the step-by-step -step how to make this will all be in the tutorial. And then the next alternate was with the beautiful um, Magnolia Mood uh, dies. And um, I also used the stamp set on the inside here. 
Uh, you can see the little magnolia there at the bottom. And this happy birthday is from the Magnolia Mood Set. This is an online exclusive item that is still available. And you did get, you picked up a pack of that vellum. Oh, good, Patty, because the regular vellum's already gone. <laughs> so I don't know how long this one will last. And then a little gem in the middle there. Um, I believe these are retiring as well. They're cinnamon cider. Is it lemon lolly and boho blue? Or, or maybe just daffodil delight and boho blue. Um, and then the uh, stylus shapes dies so that uh, oh the paper it was the poetic expressions designer series paper also on the chopping block also going to be retiring lots of last chance oh yes and then i i did a little sneak some sneak peeks here so um this first one is actually a whole series of five cards um, introducing the five new in colors so this one you can see the five new in colors pretty in pink peach pie Petunia Pop, <laughs> Summer Splash, and Shy Shamrock are the five Easter color, five Easter colors. They do look kind of like, well, actually, this looks like a trip to the tropics, right? Um, they look so nice together. I got distracted. I saw a happy Easter um, uh, from Anne in, in Australia because it's already Easter there, isn't it? Um, and then back here, we have a new embossing folder called Islet. So these products are going to be in the upcoming May 1st um, annual catalog. I'll be mailing those out in April. Um, if you're a demonstrator, the demonstrator pre-order starts April 2nd. Or if you want to try out being a demonstrator by getting the starter kit, which you can save a lot of money by getting the kit, um, you can put these new products in there. So uh, this one features the Pretty in Pink. That's the ink I've used and the cardstock. And the, um, the dies and the stamps here are a bundle, a new bundle called Unbounded Love. And then inside you can really see some more of that pretty in pink uh, paper. So, um, oh, you made two cards, Lana. Good job. Yay. Good, good to know. So this is pretty in pink. And then we have peach pie featured on this version. Same card, just featuring a different in color. And on this one, petunia pop. And on this one, which is kind of a purpley pink. It's really, really pretty though. And then this one is, hello, Anita. This one is Summer Splash. And again, these colors will all start May 1st. And the last one is Shy Shamrock, which is a really pretty kind of emerald green. Really, really pretty. All right, and then one more alternate with the new um, Country Birdhouse bundle. So um, that's where the words are from. You can build a birdhouse using, you know, cardstock and designer papers. This is the new Country Wood designer paper. And you can see I've used the uh, eyelet embossing folder in the background. And then on the inside of the card, I've got the sweet little bird from the Country Birdhouse set. And then this is another designer paper that coordinates with this um, bundle, which is called Country Lace. And then hoping you have the best day ever. So, and of course, our double stack display cards stand for display and uh, stack right in. So you can check out that video on my channel. All right, I'm going to put these away because we are going to make a card together. All right, so... I got a swap um, on in on stage. It's from one of my team members. It's from um, Nancy McBee uh, in Texas. I don't know if Nancy's watching tonight. I saw Patty is her her bestie. Patty is watching. Um, so I got this card, and I I love how she used the dies here. These are the basic border dies. These are scheduled to be retired. And I liked how it was a square image. So we're going to recreate. Hey, Nancy, we're doing your card. Or you're doing, we're doing the fold anyway. But we're going to change it up a little bit. And we're going to use Encircled in Nature. Encircled in Nature is um, one of the newer online exclusives. I haven't got to play with it much yet. We're going we're gonna to correct that tonight. <laughs> so we're going to use this one. And we're going to use the same fold that uh, Nancy did. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Yes. Where do we start? Well, that's a really good question, Susan. 
let's start by doing some die cutting. That's a good place to start, right? Well, maybe some stamping. All right, so I've got my Knight of Navy ink pad here. I love navy and white. I think it's so pretty. Um, and, you know, I guess the important thing, you guys know this, I'm preaching to the choir here, but the important thing with stamping is to make the card and then send the card, right? And you are all so amazing at that. Thank you so much for making and sending handmade cards. You are making the world a kinder place. So I am inking up this uh, book, this um I guess I was going to call it a bouquet. Can you call two flowers a bouquet? Sure we can. The, these um, flowers that, that are on the curve here, I'm going to stamp those in Night of Navy. Hi, Patty. How are you? This is my Texas friends tonight. Wait, this paper has things on it. <laughs> Maybe if I go down here at this end. It's bigger than I need anyway. It's just a scrap that I grabbed off my desk, so I don't even have measurements for you. It's just a scrap. And then we're going to take um, the Wink of Stella. Where are my Wink of Stella fans? <laughs> um, we're going to take the Wink of Stella. So this ink, I just stamped it. It is still a little bit wet. So when I touch it with the Wink of Stella, which is a glitter brush, it bleeds the, the ink and I can color in my flower. It's like, becomes like a paint. Let me bring this up closer so you can see. Hopefully you can see that. And can you see the glimmer and shimmer from the Wink of Stella? So Wink of Stella is just another way to watercolor. This is really lazy watercoloring, but it can be really striking just by stamping something in um, a color and then bleeding that color out. And of course, when you add a little moisture to that, it uh, becomes um, a little bit lighter in color. Uh, and I will just get the center of these flowers. And I'm just like, this is not fancy. I'm just <laughs> kind of scribbling it in. Uh, but the person that gets the card, they're not going to know that, right? They're just going to be like, wow, it's beautiful. All right, we're just going to get the last little bit there. And then I'm going to go ahead and get these little buds right out here, again with the Wink of Stella. And get the leaves too. Yes, we're having blue leaves because it's art and we can. <laughs> We don't have to follow nature rules, right? All right, there we go. So a little bit of little bit of shimmer, a little bit of color, kind of lazy uh, lazy uh, watercoloring there. The nice thing about the Stampin' Up stamps is they do the shading for you. That's where the the lines are on the stamp, so it just makes it really really easy. All right, so we've got that colored. Let's go ahead and close this up and let's do a little bit of die cutting. All right, got row, thunderstorm and lightning and rain in uh, West Virginia. We were supposed to have rain last night, but we never did. Um, do I need this again? I don't know. We'll, we'll put it back where it belongs, and then I'll be able to find it, right? <laughs> Maybe. We can hope. Fingers crossed. All right. I just so happen to have a scrap of paper on my desk. This is bigger than we need, but that's okay. Got to use those scraps, right? Let's bring in the die-cutting machine here. And pretty soon we'll have to cut our card base and all of that. But first we're going to get our get some parts and pieces die cut here. So let's look at this set again. Um, and these stamps on here are smaller than they actually are. You can see the they've, they've shrunk them down a little bit so they fit on the case. So sometimes you need to look inside. So this one has a wreath, a very big wreath. You can see it here. You can see it here um, that you can build. And then there's different stamped images that can kind of go inside that curved wreath. Like I love the curved pine trees, love, love, love them. Um, but another wreath that is available is in the die. So we're using the Encircled in Nature bundle. I got both the stamp set and the dies. And when you get them together, you get 10% off. And I'm gonna die cut this wreath out of this paper. Neat. Pop that right in there. And then we're going to die cut our flowers. Can I fit all of this on here? Oh, sure. I'm just going to squish it on. <laughs> so there is a die that die cuts out these, the stamped image. There's some other dies in here. So we've got the trees. Where did I have? I, oh, gosh. Well, I was going to show you some die cut trees that I had. Oh, here they are. Found them. Yay. Take a sip, everyone. <laughs> Here's what the trees look like. I mean, they're just so cool, right? Also Night of Baby. Um, and then there's some littler trees over here so you can build a whole forest. This is um, 
like some branches here. There's some leaves. You could do like a fall wreath. Um, another tree here. And then that, and that one is the die that matches the stamp tree in the set. And then these are like sprays of flowers. So really cool. Um, the the die uh, that cuts out the, the big wreath here, the kind of the vine wreath, um, has some little tabs on it that so that you can align and know uh, align it right with the stamp. So you align the tabs um, with the, the tabs on the stamp and then you can die cut it easy. All right, so we're going to put that aside. We're just going to die cut this wreath. Oh, wait, what did I do? Oh. <laughs> I'm losing things already. It's been a long day, you guys. Oh, my goodness. We've been crafting and birthdaying and uh, made my husband uh, fresh baked cinnamon rolls today. Don't be too impressed because they were the kind that you buy frozen. And But, hey, I had to thaw them overnight, right? <laughs> That was a little bit of, of effort, right? I almost went to bed last night and went, oh my gosh, I got to put the cinnamon rolls uh, out to thaw. So, um, and they were really, really good. And I shouldn't have eaten one, but I did. All right, let's go ahead and stick that down. So I'm just using a post-it note to hold the die in place so that that flower doesn't shift. And I've got extra post-it notes, so I'll stick it on this too, even though I don't really care because that one is not aligning with the stamp or anything. So we're going to go ahead and send that through. Sure we are. Let's try and be able to use the handle here. I've still got Crafternoon everywhere on my desk. I was frantically creating uh, right up to Crafternoon today for our alternate. So mm. get that out of the way. Hot in Southern Australia. Ooh, 31 degrees Celsius. That is very hot. All right, we're gonna crank that through. And okay, I think we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna need it here in a little bit again, but we'll just we'll just give it a little little rest, rest time there. All right, so I'm popping these things out. Let's see how we did. Where is my does anyone see my take your pick? Oh, found it! Take your pick tool. Excellent. I'm just using it to poke out some little extra Chad bits that I don't need. Here's another one right here. I think I got those. Oh, there's, yep, yeah, no, I think that's it. And then these are the little ejection holes here. So you just take your, take your pick tool and poke in the hole and then just very gently pull out our beautiful wreath there. And then here are our flowers that we die cut and colored. Those are going to decorate our wreath kind of right on the side there, maybe something like that. That's what I'm thinking. All right, we're off to a good start here. Let's uh, now come all the questions. Now I need your help. <laughs> all right, so. Oh, my goodness. So messy. So messy. OK, all right. Let's bring in some designer paper. All right. This is one of my favorite designer papers from the annual catalog. Absolutely love it. Um, this is the Countryside Inn designer series paper. And there's great news. If you love this paper too, it is actually carrying over to the new catalog, which is unusual for Stampin' Up. Um, usually most papers only are around one time. Um, this one is carrying over as are a couple of others, including Lovely and Sweet and one other that i can't think of right now oh perennial lavender of course yes all right so i think are these the options yeah, yeah yeah okay so i am thinking for our card let's set this aside here these are the two that i think would work the best all right so which one do you like better number one is this lighter blue background right here so there's number one and then number two is the white and I know that it doesn't quite pop quite as much but I think it's still pretty visible so let me know in the comments which paper which pattern we should use number one or number two and while you're voting I'm gonna dig out the paper trimmer I found it so that we can cut our cardstock uh, or our paper, I should say. Okay, number one is very popular. All right, number two, you are going to step aside for now. All right, and then, oops, we've got a bonus here. 
from another one. We, we might we might use these. We'll see. We'll see what we think. Okay. So we've got this one here. Where where'd Nancy's card go? Mm, I buried it. Hang on. <laughs> Found it. Okay. So we're gonna take, oh gosh. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm just a hot mess. I'm all over the place. Where are my measurements? See, oh, here we go. Found them. All right, the designer paper. So Nancy cut this. I was, I know I measured it earlier. What was it? I think the the brown layer is um, looks like it's four by four, and then the designer paper itself. What well, we're using designer paper. She used white. Was three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So we're gonna cut this three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. That was a lot of work <laughs> for my tired brain to figure out what size to cut that. But you know what? Measure twice, cut once, right? Okay, there we go. And then we're going to rotate it here. And three and seven eighths is right there on my trimmer. And then we're going to layer that on a little bit of basic white, just a teeny tiny bit. So basic white, we're going to layer this and that's going to be four by four. All right. Lots of ones still coming in. That was the winner for sure. All right. Four by four. There we go. All right. Got that. I'm going to hang on to this because we're going to need it in a minute. But let's go ahead and stick this on here. Got bunnies on the back. That's very Eastery here this Easter weekend. And there we go. Got some tape. <laughs> chaos. It is chaos here in Sue Stamfield land. So, you know, pretty much normal state of affairs. All right. So we are layering that on right there. All right. So we've got that layered together. And... All right, now we need to do some deciding. We need to decide what color our card base is going to be. Um, our, again, our wreath is going to go, oh, 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 got a little tiny bit. I didn't get poked out. It's trying to fly under the radar there. So that's going to, oh gosh, that's getting, that's so pretty, you guys, isn't that? It's going to be beautiful. All right, now we need to decide on our card base color. So here's a couple options for you. We could do boho blue or we could do night of navy. Now keep in mind, uh, we did use night of navy ink. And um, for this bit here, we're probably going to use a night of navy pattern from the pack. Like maybe the stripe or maybe the, the flowers. Um, so maybe we should go with navy, but let's let's look at boho blue because that is just a gorgeous color too. Hang on, let's take a look. Oh wait, did I grab the wrong one? Hang on, hold the phone. Uh, okay, that's misty moonlight. Oh, that would actually be another option. That's misty moonlight. Um, where is? Yeah, this is boho blue. Okay, I want to make sure I got the right one. All right, so those are our three choices. Let's bring Navy back in here. So let me know in the comments if we're going to go Night of Navy, Misty Moonlight, or boho blue. One, two, or three. Night of Navy is one, uh, Misty Moonlight is two, and boho is number three. All right. Navy, 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 Misty Moonlight has a couple fans. Hmm. The Misty Moonlight fans are coming out. Okay, Boho has been voted off the island. It's officially gone. Beautiful color, but just not for this card here. So, yep, I think Knight of Navy has squeaked out the win. All right. So let's go ahead and cut our card base. We're going to cut this four and a quarter by 11. So let's put this in here, four and a quarter by 11 there. And then we're going to score it at five and a half. 
which is right there. And then we're going to do some die cutting. All right, so now I gotta, now I gotta think, oh gosh, this is going to hurt. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what did Nancy do here? Let's see if we can figure out, she chopped off a approximately that much we're just gonna eyeball it um for you those of you who are not fans of that let's see from the point it's about three quarters from the dip or the no wait let's go from the dip susan one inch from the the dipped in point <laughs> i don't know what to call that oh so funny all right let's bring in the die cutting machine here and let's go hello from el salvador all right so let's bring in this and we got uh platform number one jiggling everything and die adapter number two we've got uh skirt up plate number three it's a little bit starting to curve on me quite a bit and then we've got the basic border dies. These are such cool dies. If you can search back on my channel, I did a video with these. Um, they are so awesome. And my team member, Anita Dixon, did a video with them. That was amazing where she did cards with all of them. Um, but they are very, very cool. Unfortunately, they are retiring. So this is your last chance to get them. Um, wow, they go all the way across. All right, Nancy, how did you do this? <laughs> So I'm going to go all the way across, right? Just like that and chop off the end. But I think I need a little bit more. All right. What did I say it was that Nancy did about an inch, I think, from the little dipped in part? Okay, now I'm too far. All right. That looks, that looks pretty good right there. I think it's pretty forgiving. We can do you know, doesn't have to be exactly the same, right? All right, what did I do with my, ah, found them. Here's the post-it notes. Take a sip. Uh, what was it scored at? Uh, so it's four and a quarter by 11 scored in half. So uh, five and a half. Sorry, Mary, I don't think I, I, I think I left that off your measurements, didn't I? Um, all right, so I'm going to scoot this over just. Uh, it, it. All right, there we go. Does that look straight, you guys? I don't know. You, you're better sight lines. I'm, I'm over here. You guys are right on top of it. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna put, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to double post-it note this one. I need a little insurance here. <laughs> I'm going to go with a second post-it. There we go. All right. Fingers crossed. Here we go. You guys ready? Let's crank it through and make a very pretty edge on our card. Right, we're going to get a big clunk. You ready? When you, whenever you have a straight uh, die all the way across like that, um, you're going to get a big clunk <laughs> when it goes through. All right, let's see how we did. All right, post-it note number one comes away. Post-it note number two comes away. It looks like it stayed pretty straight. And there we have an absolutely gorgeous edge. I don't know if you can see the little stitching on there, but it's just super cute. All right, so that is going to be like so, all right? And then, but we want that to show up, so we're going to add some white to that. So let's take a one inch by four inch. Man, you would think I'd have a one inch by four inch just hanging out here somewhere, wouldn't you? Ow! <laughs> Whoa, Al landed right on my. Okay, nobody was harmed in our, our stamping tonight. Landed on my foot, though. Dang. Right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, you really should not cut cardstock on the, the die cutting machine. Do not rec I do not recommend this method, but you know. Oh, am I cutting this too short? I think this is wrong. Mary, I think I've got your, your measurements wrong on that. Wait, let me check Nancy's card. Oh, no, it is four. Okay. Nope. You, I was, your measurements are right. Sorry about that. Uh, one by four we want here. <laughs> oh, um, Mary, do you have the number for the basic border dies handy? All right. I've got my one by four and I'm going to put this here. Um, <laughs> it didn't hurt that bad, uh, but you know, Hey, that's the, the drawback of, um, 
at crafting in your bare feet, right? All right, so we've got our die cutting machine all set up here. And when Mary, oh, here we go. There, thank you, Mary. She is on the ball here. Basic border dies, one, five, 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 eight. That is a lot of fives. Holy moly. All right. Um, so how do I want to do this? It is a little bit, I kind of want the, the cuts to be in the same area. Is that what you did, Nancy? Um, hang on. I got to look at her card again. Oh. I cut that wrong. All right, hang on, hold the phone. We want a whole piece that, oh my gosh. All right, do over, <laughs> scratch that, erase. <laughs> this is a chalkboard, I'm erasing the measurements. So, oh, you, you dropped something on your foot today too. Oh, yeah, so annoying. All right, hold the phone. <laughs> All right, this time I'm actually gonna move it so that I don't drop the trimmer on my foot again. All right, we're just going to fold that up because, you know, I've lost the trimmer. Oh, found it. Okay. Big breath, everyone. <laughs> we're going to do this. We are going to get through this. All right. Uh, what am I doing? I'm cutting a four by five and a quarter inch piece. Oh my gosh. I almost totally did it wrong. All right. Four by five and a quarter. <laughs> Nancy must be what you're yelling at me in the comments going, Susan, you're doing it wrong. Oh, I am a little slap happy. Um, it has been uh, not a lot of sleep for a couple days here. So, all right, let's go ahead and bring the die cutting machine back in. All right, now we're cooking. All right, here we go. So we are going to cut, okay, where did my little... Well, I've lost my little uh, scrap that I had. What a surprise. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's going to be such a nice little measuring tool. All right. Well, shoot. Okay. It's all right. It's all good. I'll find it as soon as I cut this. You know I will. Right? Okay. It has run amok. Okay. So we'll use this. All right. So we're going to take this. And I want the scallops to be similar here. That looks pretty good. Um, how much did she cut away? It looks like about a half inch and about three fourths inch on this one. So I'm just going to eyeball it right. We don't need to measure. We'll just do guesswork. <laughs> All right, let's bring that back just a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to hold it right there. You used the four by five and a quarter, so you'd have the whole piece to write on. Yes, good plan. I like it. So nice to have the maker of the original card right in the comments here to help me out. <laughs> Along with all the rest of my wonderful viewers that uh, helped me through the process here. All right, we've got that. Let's go ahead and die cut that. And then we can take the die cutting machine away and do a little bit of cutting here. Oh, goodness. All right. Let's see what else I can drop on my foot tonight. All right. So there we've got this. Um, these fun little scraps could be used for another project, right? Let's get, oh, that was the piece I was looking all over for. It was stuck in the bottom of the machine. Of course it was. But we could you know use those on another project because they're gonna match up fun fun okay all right let's almost lost the flowers let's see what else i can lose here i right, know to put this aside and make sure nothing else is stuck on this okay it's not all right i'm gonna put this long skinny die back on the magnet sheets i get these magnet sheets from stamp and storage um and the little pocket sleeves that go in and I, that's just my preferred way to store my dies. I know some people um, will put them in a stamp set, uh, put the magnet sheets in there, but like these dies didn't come with a stamp set. So, all right, so this is gonna go in here, but we're gonna put a little designer paper right here first. Um, let's grab our two neat two navy choices and see which way we want to go there 
All right, so we could go with this stripe. Tuck that in there, and then remember this piece is going to go on the top. So we could go that way, or we could go with this other one. And I don't know if we want to go that direction or the other direction, but that would be another option. Or what would it look like if I did the same we did on the front? Let's see what that would look like. Mm, it's hard to, that's what that, eh, no, that looks weird because I'm going a different direction. Yeah, I think we need to go navy. Okay. All right. Do you want to go with number one or number two? Let me know in the comments which one you like better. Number one or number two? Yeah, a flower. Is that what we would call that? I guess we would call that a flower. Let's see. I'll, I'm going to just cut a one inch strip for both of them. And then whatever you choose, I'll be ready. While you're voting, I'll get this cut. There's the stripe. Okay, now I'm going to forget which one was number one. I'm pretty sure number one was this one I'm cutting right now. It's kind of like a flower. And stripe was number two. All right. Boy, you guys are pretty tight on this one. I think I saw a few more ones, but it was really close. Let's check it out here. All right. So... We're going to put our stripe here. That's number one. And then this piece would go right in here. Like so. Okay, that moved, but don't worry. It won't when we stick it down. It's just kind of eyeballing it here to see if we like it or not. And I've got this upside down, but we'll still give us an idea. So we've got that. And let's go back to the other option, which was this one. I don't even know if we need a designer paper over here. I was wondering if we should just skip it. Let's bring this down a little bit. You get the idea. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to try a one inch strip of the same paper. This paper does not want to leave my trimmer, but it's going <laughs> to. All right, there, got it out. All right, this, is this four? I think so, yeah. Let's try this and just see. Okay, so, yeah, if I turned this, this direction, then this would be going the same direction. Let's try that. I'm way behind on comments. Oh, embossing. Oh, that's a good suggestion, Linda Johnson. Linda says you could emboss a piece. That is, you surely could. All right, let's see what this would look like right here. And this would be right here. Nothing wants to stay for me tonight. Do you do this too when you make a card? Like I have to lay it out before I commit to sticking it down. Okay, I've got this in the upside down, but that's okay. It's just for eyeballing it right now. Is your reason that you cut the white paper instead of the DSP with the die? Um, because that's how Nancy did it. <laughs> Good question, Jane. Um, but yeah, you could have just done a white uh, quarter inch piece and cut the, the DSP with the, the die. Yeah. Totally would have worked. Um, where did our, let's try our wreath here again. Let's see, that goes like that. And here's our flowers. I'm just laying it out to see what we think. Yeah, I kind of like that. You, you keep the, you guys like the navy stripes. Some of you like it the same. Let's put the navy stripe back and take a look at that one again. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere this down just partially because it keeps moving on me. All right. 
I left it uh, so that I can still tuck the designer paper under it. Whoops, that is totally crooked, Sue. Well, well, okay. Let's just fix that, shall we? All right, there we go. That's better. And then this would tuck right here. So that's the navy. Oops. <laughs> I'll I'll stick it in for it, but we just we're just uh, laying it out here to see what we think. Put this back on right here. All right, it looks like navy is the you like the first one better. That was this one. <gasps> oh, I know so many choices, right? Um, let's see what this one looks like on the inside. Maybe use the blue flowers on the white background. So somebody also suggested doing an embossed piece. Um, let me see what I have floating around right here. This is a little too tiny, but yeah, I think that's going to be too white. It does add a nice contrast, though. Um, <laughs> uh, some people say this one, and some people say that one. All right, we're going to go with this one. I'm going to make an executive decision, and we're going to stick this one on. We're going to go for it. All right, let's just sliding that in. I've got my adhesive on it. And got it a little short. I think I might have cut it a little short. I'll split the difference. We'll do that, right? been easier to do it if I hadn't stuck this piece on but it was driving me crazy okay there we go all right that's in place and then we're gonna take this one and go ahead and hear this down all right I'm gonna make sure my stripes are going the same way as the piece on the end There we go. All right. And then we're going to add in our flowers here. This is where I would like to do a little popping up, which is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, it's easy over here because I can hide that with my flowers. So I'm going to start there. And then I'm going to need to uh, so I'm gonna just stick this here and stick this here and then I'm going to do some fancy footwork with my mini dimensionals by uh, cutting them down so I can have at least one or two over on this side all right sticking to my nails instead of the so the flowers are going to go right over here all right, so I need a couple right here. All right, we're gonna grab our mini dimensionals and a pair of scissors here. And I'm gonna cut some in half, maybe even in force. We just need a little tiny bit. So I've got kind of a big, um, I don't know, what would you call these? <laughs> what would you call these uh, little bud things? Let's call them buds, that, that works. There's kind of a, a double one here, so that's really easy place to hide um, a half a mini dimensional right there. And there's another double right there. So uh, where did my other half go? Here we go. Here's the other half of that one. Stick that there. I think that will be enough. Don't need to adhere it um, in every spot, right? All right, so I've got those 
and I've got that down there. Okay, let's peel these guys off. It's, it's uh, a little unusual because I've got it sticky on both sides right now. And, you know, I almost feel like I might need one over here. Let's see what we can do with that. Take one more here and see where I can squish it in, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's sticky to me. It's very sticky. That is the whole point of it, right? All right. Let's peel that off. And I think we've got all the backings off. All right, let's go ahead and finish our card here. Pop that on right there. And then I think I'm going to just add another little mini dimensional to these flowers. When you're sticking two things, so this is covering up some of the adhesive. So I'm just going to add another little mini down here just to help these flowers adhere. And we're going to just pop that in. I'm just making sure that I've got the dimensionals covered up basically. And uh, Let's see, I'm going to curve this a little bit more. Right like that. All right, there is our wreath. And we're going to push this down. These were the half ones right here. There we go. Oh, you got your Craftanoon card made, Mary? Oh, good. So you were too busy uh, moderating <laughs> during the video. So now that I have it made, I'm changing my mind. That is the card maker's privilege, right? I'm just not liking this. It's not enough contrast for me. Let's pop that off. And let's see what my other options are. We do have the stripe here still. We were thinking the navy would be better with white as the base. Mm, yeah, good point. And try it with the navy again and then I did have we had another option which was this one I don't know that we're gonna care for that that's another no I think I, I think we're gonna go with the navy here I think it was just a um it was a little too distracting and I did not do a good job centering this oh my goodness what happened there what happened here the question is can I move it <laughs> That's the million dollar question. All right, come on, you guys. Cooperate. There, there are dogs right outside the door to my craft room wanting my attention. She's, oh, she's going to scratch on the door. All right. I was gone, and she doesn't like it when I leave. When we went out for dinner, she was not happy with that plan. All right, let me just get rid of these guys. All right, just want it up a little bit higher. <laughs> We're gonna get there. I'm so picky, oh my goodness. All right, there we go. Are you on, are you stuck? Stuck to me mostly, there we go. All right, that looks more centered to me. All right, so our card opens like this. Now, there are some words in the set that we could use on the inside of the card. Uh, May this year be incredible and filled with possibilities. That is a great one for birthdays, and I do send a lot of birthday cards. Um, there is not an actual happy birthday in here, so I'll use another birthday greeting. Um, but I do like this for the inside of the card. Let's pop that on a block here and get that stamped inside. All right. I am behind on birthday cards right now. Eek. All right. Let's pull this out and get this stamped. Right here. There we go. All right. And there, the 
the blue flowered paper is on my stamp case. <laughs> well, yeah, probably everything is stuck to everything now that's <laughs> that's uh, right there. So um, I don't know. Happy birthday on the inside, I think, don't you? Let's see. What, what's a good happy birthday I can grab quickly? When you want one quickly, you can't ever find it, right? Let's see. Happy birthday. Someone sh shout out the name of a stamp set that has a good happy birthday in it because my mind is blank right now. Um, wonderful plots. Um, oh, I know. Uh, Magnolia Mood. Where's that at? Let's grab our Magnolia Mood. It's right here at the. Oh, something fancy. Yeah, that's a good one. That's right here on my floor because I use. Let's use this happy. Oh my goodness! Sorry. Hello. <laughs> my camera just decided to do its own thing. All right. Let's go ahead, and I will probably do that again. So hopefully, I will catch it. All right. Let's just put "Happy Birthday" right above this part. I think I don't want to put it on the front. "Happy Birthday." There we go. All right. So our inside is all done. And there's the front of our card. Do we want to add any gems to the front of our card? We've already got Wink of Stella. I'm, so this does shimmer in person. I don't know that the lights in the camera are picking that up. Um, but we can add some gems here if you guys want to. So let me know if we're going to add any gems to our card. I'm going to put my Native Navy ink pad away. And again, let's take a look at Nancy's version. She used the uh, um, Latte Love. Is that the name of the paper, I think? And a little latte. Uh, maybe it's the other way around. Latte Love is the stamp set, and a, a little latte is the designer paper. Um, yes to gems. All right. Yes to gems. Okay. Ooh, you're talking my language now. <laughs> All right. That's the fun part. All right, you know what I am so sad about that's leaving? <gasps> you guys, I don't know how I'm going to function. Um, the iridescent basic rhinestone jewels are leaving. They are retiring. I use them <laughs> all the time. So I'll have to find some new gems to love or just keep using them, right? Um, so we could use, though, they're kind of pink for this card, though, aren't they? I'm wondering if maybe pearls would be a better choice for this card. Just uh, if you've got another idea in the, um, the comments, feel feel free to shout it out. Yeah, these seem awfully pink. We could also use basic rhinestones. Definitely gems. Okay. All right. Where is my take your pick tool? I have completely buried it under some paper and dimensional. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Okay. Take a sip, everyone. We have located the, so what I like about the iridescent pearls, and these are carrying over, is they do have a little bit of a kind of a blue shimmer to them um, because they are iridescent, so they'll really work with our card. I don't really want to put them in the middle of the roses. I think I actually just want to put them around the roses to just kind of accent them a little bit. Let's try that, see what we think here. I just love gems. They just add that special finishing touch and pearls are just a really basic classic one to have. Kind of like to do in a triangle pattern. So I'm just debating where I want to put that other pearl. Could put, you know what, where are my little ones? Let's put a little one on. How about that? That'll stay, that'll change it up just a little bit, right? Let's put it over here. All right, so there we just got a little bit of pearl action. I think this guy needs to come down a little bit. Mm. Okay, we can put those right next to each other. I'm going to do that. All right, there we go. There's some pearls. We absolutely could also add a uh, ribbon, but I think I'm pretty happy with it as it is. I hope you are too. Good job, guys. As always, I so appreciate your uh, input. Um, Another way that we, we could have actually done a word kind of coming into the, the wreath here as well. So that would be another option with this one. And Nancy McVie, thank you so much for inspiring us with your version uh, that I got as a swap at OnStage. So uh, super fun. All right. And then quick reminder, Crafternoon was today. 
If you tuned in late, I'm going to do a quick little recap of our new fun fold. This is the um, double stack display fun fold card. And all of these will be on my blog soon. I'm, I'm shooting for Monday. We've got our beautiful magnolia and um, poetic expressions, right? <laughs> totally blanked out there. Um, again, a little tired here, but it's all good. And then we have our five in color versions with Shy Shamrock and uh, Summer Splash. This is a really good way for me to remember these names. Petunia Pop, Peach Pie, and Pretty in Pink, which we had years ago and is now back. Thank goodness. And then we have our painted lavender version. And again, this is with the Basics Vellum, which is a pattern vellum that's in the annual catalog and is retiring. And then our make and take version, which was with the beautiful uh, perennial lavender designer series paper. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Those of you who um, Got the packet in the mail to make the crafter noon cards along with me in the video this afternoon you'll be getting that uh, email with the tutorial as soon as i have them done and team members same thing i did get a little carried away i made extra cards this time so that takes me a little longer so thank you ahead of time for your patience and then with the holiday tomorrow that's going to put me a little behind as well but i'm shooting for monday that's my goal take care everyone have a great night have a great rest of your weekend and a uh, lovely easter holiday and we will see you uh, Tuesday night at 7.30 Central for another uh, video adventure. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.